All right, now we're going to look at 12, 13, 14 on the Chapter 3 test review. So Jason used a map to record the elevations of five locations. Here's that map here. Jason wrote the elevations in order from lowest to highest. Is Jason correct? Use words and numbers to explain why or why not. If Jason is incorrect, what is the correct order? So he put them in order, and we want lowest to highest. And he put, well, yeah, I can tell that right away. That's not going to be correct. Okay. <clears throat> so, you sure what the elevator is? Jason correct? No. The correct order is. And I can make a vertical number line to help me solve this. Let me do that a little better. I'm going to make a vertical number line to help me solve this problem. Okay, I only go up to 8, so I'm going to put my 0 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is going to be right up there. And it goes all the way down to negative 20. Uh, and yeah, so let's actually, let's do this. Uh, okay, I'm going to count by twos. Zero. So two, four, six, eight. That's going to be my eight. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. That's going to be my negative twenty. So I'm just going to graph these. Uh, knob Hill would be two, four, not quite to six. It's going to be right here. It's going to be Knob Hill. Bear Creek is going to be negative 18. It's going to be right here. Poe Valley is going to be negative 20. It's going to be right there. Fox Hill, 2, 4, 6, 8. It's going to be right there. That's Fox Hill. And negative 3. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 3 is right in between. And that's Jack's River. All right, now to put them in order from lowest to highest, elevations, we start at the bottom and go to the top. We start it from the bottom, now we hear. All right, so the bottom is going to be negative 20. And then going up from there, we have uh, Bear Creek, and Bear Creek was negative 18. And my next point Jack's River, that was negative 3. And my next point, NH, which was Knob Hill, that's 5. And my last point, FH, Fox Hill, and that was 8. All right, number 13, true or false, 1 fifth is between 0 and 1. So again, I would create a number line. Looks like we have to go as far back as negative 4 and as far to the right as positive 4. So I have a number line, 0, positive 4, negative 4. I can have 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And just check out these situations. One fifth is between zero and one. Here's zero, here's one. One fifth is more than zero, but less than one. So yeah, it's gonna be right about there. So that's true. Negative two and two thirds is between negative one and negative two. Here's negative one, here's negative two. Negative two and two thirds is gonna be negative two and some more. So it's gonna be over here. So it's gonna be outside of that limit. So that is false. Okay, negative 3 and 5 eighths is between negative 3 and negative 4. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 3 fifths would be negative 3 and some. 
so it's going to be right about here so yes it lies in between negative or excuse me positive four and three, and three forces so between three and four here's three here's four we have four and some more so no this is outside that range it's going to be four and a little bit more so it's going to be a point down here all right Choose less than, greater than, or equal to. Well, to solve these, we need to change each fraction into a decimal. So I have three-fourths. Divide the denominator into the numerator. Four can't go into three evenly, so I add a decimal. Four goes into uh, 30 seven times. Seven times four is 28. Subtractive says two, add a zero. 4 goes into 25 times, and that goes in nice and perfectly. So this side's going to be 0 0.75. And then if we compare those two numbers, we have zeros in the one place, that's tied. So we go to the tenths. 7 is bigger, so this side is bigger. Okay. Now, you'll go ahead and do that. Uh, for the rest of them, let me do let me do 14D though. So again, this is going to be point, and then you just need to change the fraction to a decimal. Here, change the fraction to a decimal. Here, they're both negative, so I want to look at that. I'm going to change both to a decimal. So two goes into one. We have to add our zero. So this side is going to be negative 0 0.5. And this side, 4 goes into 3. Well, I already did that earlier. So if you didn't erase your work, which I always tell you don't erase your work, you already have this answer. I'll go ahead and show it. This side's going to be negative 0 0.75. Okay, so for this, I want to look at my number line because we're dealing with negatives, so sometimes that can be confusing. Okay, here's negative 1. Halfway, halfway to negative 1 would be right about here. And then 3, set three uh, excuse me, 3 fourths of the way or 0 0.75 would be right about here. Okay, so again, this is 0 0.5 negative, and this is 0 0.75 negative. Okay, so 0 point, negative 0 0.5 is actually closer to 0 or further to the right, so it is actually the larger number here, okay? So when you're dealing with two negatives, it's better to put it on a number line because then you can see it more clearly. <coughs> All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.